if I lose you, call me back and I'll have to redo it, but I'll do it pretty fast. You know, now I know what to do. All right. And if I, um, the big stupid. All right, you're good. All right. Oh, hey, we're live now. Hey, welcome good. everybody to uh, uh, the, I think I'm on number seven now. Why are Wednesday number seven? Uh, this is a continuation of last week, and we have a guest, my guinea pig. We're each other's guinea pigs on this live streaming thing, uh, where it's Steve Zara from Zara Dental Lab, and uh, he's going to show me uh, an upgraded fabrication technique for the um, pendulum, T-Rex, Pendex, that, that kind of thing. So uh, let me pull you up, Steve. All right, you're up. Say hello to everybody. Hey, hello. We uh, there we go. I'm I'm we're we're still experimenting. We're trying to different camera angles and stuff, and we're uh, let me pull us side by side here and be a little fancy. Okay, Steve can't see this, but we're side by side. <laughs> uh, but he uh, we talked yesterday about uh, he had a, an idea for my upgraded to help with the fabrication what i showed in my video was uh how to do a solder technique to attach sheaths to bands uh and steve uses a spot welder uh do you want to elaborate on that any are you talking yeah can you not hear me <laughs> i'm sorry i'm it's such a weird thing because i'm i'm finally got it i'm watching myself on the delay okay um, yeah, I was, I was talking to Cade last night. It happened that I was bend, I was had an appliance to bend and it was for a Hyrex and I looked down and it was for a T-Rex. I was like, Oh, how convenient. Um, I make about four or five of these a month and I use a spot welder and watching Cade work through how he did it last week is perfect if you don't have a spot welder because you have to improvise, you have to learn to thing, you have to learn how to solder without having spot welds. So it's complete different fabrication. And what I what I decided to do is I just put all the wires together and I'm gonna demonstrate what, doing the exact same process that Kay did, I'm gonna do with a spot welder and show you the difference. Um, it's much faster, it's, it's easier. It's much easier. That's that's yeah. the, the key ingredient. Yeah. And, and um, well, just to say, I uh, had a spot welder at one of the labs I worked at um, and two different. I had tack welder from Great Lakes and I had a spot welder. And then when I went to another lab, they didn't have anything at all, which was actually amazing. That So that's where I learned this little solder technique to attach the thing. So. My preferred method is using a spot welder, but since I just started my new lab, I don't have a spot welder yet. And maybe many of you are in the same position where uh, you don't have a spot welder, but you're thinking about getting one. Uh, and that way, you know, you can uh, decide by watching this, uh, which one you like. Uh, I'd... Yeah, you can get a little taste. Yeah, you, know, you, can, you yeah. can get a little taste of what it's like to see someone use it. Um, it's not an arc welder. It's not a laser welder, but it is definitely my third hand. Yeah. <laughs> like I always, in, in the lab, you always want to have a third hand and you never have one unless you have, like for you, you probably grab your wife. Hey, get over here. Hold yeah, this. Yeah, hold this. <laughs> yep. Or I do the same thing with my wife or my kids. Like, hold this. You know, like I need, I need to solder. Put your finger there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, kind of like when you glue models the catch together. It. It's like, I'm going to hold this, spray it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah there's always a little there's there's always you need a third hand and, and i know they have those little great lakes little holders with the with the um oh the the, the clip yeah the two out i want to say the clip. roach clip yeah roach <laughs> alligator clips i guess that's a pc term yeah. yeah the roach clip so you can use it as your third hand but this you're actually creating that bond where once it's in place and that's what i'm going to demonstrate so you can kind of see what it looks like when it, when things are spot welded and what you can do and what you can't do. Um, so let me begin with this. I'll, um, let me see, I'm, I'm, are you are you ready to switch over? Like you wanna try yeah, this? I'm gonna show them the results of last week. I took some pictures. 
so I can show them uh, that while, while before you do yeah, before, right before you do that, I'm going to show you this bot welder okay. because then I can then you can switch over and I'll, you know because otherwise I have to reset it. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. okay. Can you see, let me know if you can what you see? Okay. Yeah, that looks. I see a race car on top of it. Yeah, this is, my wife bought this for Christmas, and she goes, "I wanted to um, get this for you because it'll remind you of your old days." <laughs> your hot rod. <laughs> this is my old car. Is it really? It's a it Formula a Firebird. Awesome car. Yeah, oh. exact exact same car, but mine was red. What year? Anyway, it's my little joke. Uh, eighty nine. Oh, see, so I had a sweet 90, car. Ninety three what? Trans Am, and that was my sweet car. Uh, I love that thing. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. I miss it. Yeah, I do too. So anyway, this is my spot welder. And the the thing that I love about this guy is it has the arms. Um, people call them hands. Like, so basically I can spot weld on the fly. Because otherwise you have to use this little gadget here, you know, to set your yeah. bands and screws and like whatever you're going to spot weld. And this is actually a like a T-Rex that I had laying around that... I will um, kind of show you what I'm doing using it as an example to show you the uh, positioning. Oh, okay. But anyway, I switch over, and I'm going to set this up, okay, and then come back to me when when we're good. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We're switched. We're switched over now. I've switched to a different camera. I'm actually uh, making one right now, another one uh, that I might get into. Uh, let me switch. So uh, this is – well – I did the wrong website. Let me go to, uh, let me switch to, so I've started an orthodontic appliance database. Uh, this is actually my lab website. It's, uh, it's at designerretainer.com. And I've made a quick link to the orthodontic appliance database. Uh, and what this is, every appliance that comes through, I'm going to start taking a picture of it. And I can even invite other labs like Steve, uh, and other people on Facebook to contribute to this. And, and it's, I'll, I'll announce it later, but um, excuse me, this is what it looks like. And so I have, and again, this is uh, a quick link at the top of the And I, let's see, it is down here. So pull this up and it gives you a description and, and the category. But here is what we worked on last week. So you should be able to see uh, it has the four rests, and I got the soldered that that part that soldered wire that makes it a T-Rex. Um, let's see if I can. There's another top-down shot. And there's the screw trying to fit in there. And this was a super narrow pallet. Uh, Steve and I were talking about this yesterday. It's the the, the kids that uh, need this the most, that have the smallest mouth, that need expansion, are the most difficult to make. And there's the finished appliance. Cade, whenever you're ready. Oh, you're there? All right. Let me... Yeah, take um, bring my picture up, and then I can go from there. Okay. So I can see where it's at. There we go. You're upside down, but since we're at the top down, I think we're okay um, with this. We're upside down? Yeah. Because I can turn it, remember? Oh, Show, yeah. um, I, I'm waiting for the delay. And then I can get going because once I can, once I see, I can make the adjustment. Okay. Right now, I'm looking at your um. Pictures. Okay, it's upside down. Yeah. Um, let me make some adjustments, and I'm going to turn it around. Okay. Okay. So. so there. <laughs> so 
Bixby's back. Get out of there. That darn Bixby always getting in the way. And the worst is that button. I keep hitting it all the time like a power button. So I've, I've got it on me right now. I think we might be frozen again. Oh, there we go. We're back on that. You're vertical up and down. Okay, just hold on. You be quiet. <laughs> oh, hey, J Jay. I'm checking the, the chat right now. Jay said he had a 1970 Dodge Charger RT440 mag. Super redneck that oh, I boy. was am. <laughs> Alex Surdu says, hello, guys. Hello. Hey, why these uh, technicians, uh, women and males are in the chat? Why don't you tell us where you're from? Tell us your years of experience. Tell us what you, you know, if you own your own lab, like give some feedback. And are you still, are you there, Cade? Yeah, I'm here. Can you see the visual now? Yes, you're still vertical, but we can see it. It's vertical. Yeah, it like it didn't go horizontal on you. Oh, that's weird. I just switched the phone over. Like it's going up and down. When we when we practiced this, it wasn't like that. Was no, it? <laughs> it was full screen. But it's upside down. Like, can you see my hand? Yeah, yeah, and you're tapping. Yeah, I can see. I can still see. And well, I'm I'm trying to figure out it. If... It's like your your phone is in portrait and not landscape is what I was trying to say. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, portrait. Sorry, that's what I meant by vertical. Right. Okay. It's in portrait mode. What? Okay. I'm just watching the delay to get this right. Once I get, um, bear with us. Once I get this right, then it'll be it'll look so much better. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense to do it sideways. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. We're up. Like right now, it's up and down. I'm Alexander. That's so strange. Ortho on from Instagram. Alexander Ortho from Instagram. Maybe you know me by that name. That does sound familiar. Greg Malone, Des Des Moines, Iowa, started making frameworks in 1987. Now removable. That's the year of your car, wasn't it? 87. Mine was 89. Mm. So he was 89. already making frameworks before your car was ever made. <laughs> yeah, right. My car is is melted right now. Did it catch on fire? Okay, let's figure this. Why is it in portrait? Um, I, it actually looks real good if you want it to go ahead with it, because it it I, I can see everything. Mm -hmm. And it since it's a top down, you know the. It doesn't. Let's see if I can. All right. Well, I guess we're gonna have to run with this because I don't understand why it's in. Sometimes the camera. It's not in landscape. Yeah, it doesn't. Like you gotta. In less. Sometimes you have to like move it around and uh, get it to readjust itself the compass of it or whatever the what do you call those things in there yeah okay well i guess i'm gonna have to get going and okay. um do a signing room. so you got all the frameworks bent the wires bent I yeah see. these are all the parts okay and these are my little sheets that i'm using now you use sheets that were like you can buy them they come little sheets packets and um yeah. you have to spot weld that on if they're not attached to the van and what i have is i actually used an 050 tube 051 tube oh. and i cut it 0 0.051 and i use this tubing as my as my sheath and the reason why i do that there's actually a reason and let me down if you can see what i'm talking about Cade, you see how the this is the TMA wire. 
Yeah. Okay. And if I have it in the sheath, when you set the spring, the the wire actually sits like this. Okay. Your, your in that because it's got when it's in that um, oh. that sheath, it has room to play. So yes. it actually goes on on an angle. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now, see when saying. it's in a nice tight tube, when it's in a tube, it wants to go down, but it can't. So this way, you get more of a, a your um, your line going straight back is more directional. It's not going on the axis. It's not going like you're not tilted. Right. It's not going to like drive it into and the that, guns. Yeah, because you know how you see them sometimes they really drive down because the springs are shooting the molars back and yeah. you're shooting them down by having this little tube, it doesn't allow it to go down so much it shoots it straight backwards. And that's what you know you don't want it to go straight back. So let me um, let, let me have I'll you get going on this move the uh, oh, go your, ahead. your foam about two inches to your right. And perfect. There you go. Now, this is how the spot welder works. I'm going to grab this little sheet and attack it. So I tack weld it onto my... Can you see that? Yeah, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> That's awesome. So, no. Yeah, watch. Now, all I have to do is hold one, like a, one side on the, um, the metal the band, the yeah. stainless steel band, and then I'll tack weld it where I want it to go. And it's, it's as much as I'm shooting it down with my foot and it's done. Now here's the beautiful thing. You know how you said you soldered it and it wasn't quite exactly the right position? Right. Well, I can still move it. Oh. I can I can move it. You see that? So it like rotates around that. So I can wheel. make that. I could make that adjustment on the fly. Now you can't do that because you'd have to re you resolder it and moved it. And it's yeah. really dangerous because you're overheating the band. Oh yeah. Now here I moved a little bit and now I'll seal it. I'll just spot weld it. And it's it's locked in place. Now it's not going anywhere. Now did uh, let me ask this. Did you change the power of or of the individual spot weld or or uh, just did multiple no. spot welds? No. No, it's no, I just put it on full. I put it on like full power, mm. um, because I know what I'm doing. If when you're a beginner, you put it on like level four, and that allows you some play. You know, you don't want to be like really because once because sometimes you tack weld it on there, it's not coming off. Right. Yeah. And and for instance, um, you know our bands. You know our bands. These are spot welded. These aren't, most of these bands aren't laser welded. They're spot welded. If you can look, you can see the four indentions on your weld. Yeah. You know, now this came from GAC. Yeah. You know, when you get your parts ordered, there's actually someone that's using this piece of equipment. It's because this is not coming off. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, you oh, know yeah. what we're using them for. There's going to be a lot of pressure so with once that you put, TMA wire on there. Yeah. Once you put it in place, it's not coming off. And then I'm going to solder it. Okay. I'm, I'm not done. I'm going to solder it. Oh, but you're you're just okay. So it. I'm gonna I'm just getting it in place. So so I pick it up. No, I want to grab it with with my ring. I want to grab it in this hand because I sparks. can't move the camera. So now I'm gonna put it in position and spot weld it. I'm clicking it. It's there. And I can check the adjustment. Remember, I told you I can move it around a little bit and make it perfect. So now it's like exactly where I want it to go. Nice. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Now you you remember these little guys are a pain because this is the T Rex part. Right. Part that is the biggest pain because now you have a spot. You're gonna solder right close to this. Now check this out. I'm just gonna glue this down really fast. So I, I had the contact right there and I'll just put a little dab of glue and seal it. And then what's nice about this glue is I have about three seconds to make the adjustment and then it's good, right? Now I'll take my spot welder and I'm gonna weld it right there. Now it's ready to solder, this isn't going anywhere. That's awesome. Okay, yeah, so you know how you had to do that all by, 
And then the next part, I'm gonna do the second side because you gotta do both sides at the same time. The exact same thing. I put a little glue. What's nice about this glue is it ships right off when it's soldered. And I'll show you that too. So it just picks right off. It's not gonna like stuck on your, so good position to be, you know, a millimeter off the tissue. And it's set. So now I spot weld it. Now see how I can still move it? What's the brand name? And now it's, now it's set. So at this point, I'm ready to solder them, okay? Now, I add my solder. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to add my flux. Get out of myself. So I will add some flux. See how I kind of buried it in there. And of course, the, what you would say when you're watching this is going, you just buried it, the, the um, solder is going to flow through the tube. Right. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. So I get the, so I'm going to solder the T Rex, the disarm part. Okay, you can see it's pretty buried in solder, right? Yeah. I'm going to do the other side. So it's going to flow all around that, including the T-Rex arm. Well, that's what would happen if I didn't do the next step, the next uh, little secret. Okay. Okay. And you ready for this, Cade? Yeah. Drum roll. Oh, here, I can do that. This is the part that I wanted to reach through the camera and give you while you were making that video. Do you have this? But you're not in the camera. What is that? Oh, this is called anti-flux. Have you ever heard of it? Yes, I have, but I've never, never gotten it before. It's a white paste. Um, let me give you a real quick briefing. There's, there's three different ways to use anti-flux. So you don't cover that solder joint. The first way is the cheapest, and that's by using heat shield. Like if you have heat shield, it'll prevent it, but sometimes you can still get solder in yeah. it, okay? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like oh, yeah. your typical heat shield. The next one is if you have lead. Lead, uh, silver solder and lead do not bond. So if you have a lead pencil, you know, like a, a mechanical pencil. That's what I use. You just stick a piece of lead through it. Yeah. I've... And that's, it's. I sharpen a it's pencil. cheating, but yeah, and and I sharpen it, and then I stick it in the hole and break it off, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it wedges itself in there. Right. So the next step, what you want to do, is what I like to do is I use this stuff, and I've had this. Believe it or not, it cost about ten bucks, and I've had it probably for fifth. I've had it for about fourteen years. <laughs> it's I'm get. I probably need some more, but I've had it forever. So I just cover the hole. You see, how I'm doing that. And that solder will not flow in there. And it, and it doesn't affect like your flame? Because sometimes heat shield no. affects your flame, you know, nope. if you get it around it. That's one thing I don't like using heat shield as an anti-flux because it, my, my flame starts sputtering on me. And right because it's pulling up the it, correct yeah. so that's that that's the benefit of using this um now what i would like to do oh here it is I, I i was looking for my heat shield my bigger heat shield i'll put a little heat shield on this wire because i just otherwise it'll turn black and then it's just less finishing you know what i'm saying if i just oh, yeah. bury in a little bit of heat shield i can always just rinse it off and, and you don't want it to turn bright red on you, you know? <laughs> no 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 of yeah. course not no that too although it's gonna be it really doesn't matter because it's not a breaking point but you you definitely yeah. you don't want to solder things you want to do it correct the first time if you don't have to okay the next step is to solder this bad boy okay um i'm going to show you two different things really fast about soldering that that our little trick for beginners, everybody learns how to solder with this type of solder. It's very thin, right? And, it's mm -hmm. probably, and you might use it. I don't, like, it's very thin. I, I like the thicker stuff myself. 
Okay, well, that's my point. <laughs> I use very thick solder because I solder a lot of things in bulk. And all I know is like when you heat it up and you heat, it's such a quicker bond and just gets it done faster and a more of a cleaner, you know, without bubbles and porosity and heat. You can, I always find with this solder, more people have porosity because they're overheating their wires because it's just, it's too fast for them. Yeah. And they like, they, you know how you turn the wire red and then you add the solder and it's like, by the time you're done, it's like, it's, it's not bonding because it's, you overheated it. <laughs> yeah. You, you with with the thicker the... wire, I'm sorry, the thicker solder, I always find it works much better. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do it all at the same time because I know that that flux will stop the um, anti-flux will stop it. And so it, now you were being extremely careful because you had to do one at a time and then you're trying to get it with not covering the hole. And yeah. let's see how I did the up and down. And I did that joint and it's done. Okay, oh, a little touch. It's done. Oh, there you go. Now do the other side. Let's see how I can solder everything at the same time. So I'm like, and probably if I move my camera over, we probably hey, see better. That's, that's good. Does that help? What's what's the gauge of that? Not gauge, but the thickness of that solder. I don't know because I buy it at 50 troy ounces at a time. <laughs> I don't have the the gauge markings. I buy a lot of solder, like 50 troy ounces is, uh, runs about 700, $800. Mine's but anyway, that's soldered. Okay. 032 wire thickness. So I cut these off. Um, it'll be easier if I just get it out of the camera. We got a James Murphy said, hello, Kate and Steve, I'm from Washington. I've been in the lab field since 1991. Awesome. Po That's awesome. Po -yallop. Po -yallop. I'm saying that totally wrong, but. So my next step, Cade. Are you with me? Yeah, I see you. The next step, what I do, I'm, I'm watching the delay. I'm finally clipping the wire now, and that was like 30 seconds ago. <laughs> so the next step is to remove the glue. Just take a little, um, I, I forgot what they call this, number seven. Exacto knife. And see how the glue just chips away? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't have to. And what was the, is that the glue made by? Uh, American the glue supply? made by American Dental Supply. Okay. And I did a really quick Instagram post on it the other day to kind of demonstrate it. it, it it's incredible. It's it's like so cool to be able to just grab things and just go. Yeah. So the next step is to finish this before I put the T-Rex together. So I'm going to uh, move my camera. So if you want to switch cameras, okay, go to something really fast. Or me? How about you? Went on. I'm, I'm good. We're switched. Okay. I am going to Let's see if I can download this. So maybe y'all can see what I'm doing here. Can you say? Oh, let me check. Yes. Oh, you, and you're sideways now. You're horizontal. You're correct. I'm correct now? Yeah. <laughs> Am I in the right position? Uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It, we'll have to figure that out later for another one. But as far as um, I'm going to finish this now, I just use an e-cutter. I can with this case I can take this off because I've seated the bands so it they're they're not going to break off 
Well, hopefully. No, the band's good. The, you'll see. See how it's perfect? Yeah. I can. It's so much easier to finish this appliance when it's when you can do this. But when the doctor sends them and the bands are on her, obviously you can't do that. So I can finish my shutter joint. final step is to clean the holes out and I use that carver that we talked about a couple weeks ago I use these burrs make my spring aligners well they serve there's several multiple purposes you see that Caden how I can just cut right through yeah and, and now my hole is clear and just to be totally transparent I did clog up one of my uh, sheaths with solder, and I had to use one of these cutter burrs and just uh, hollow out that solder. And the good thing is solder is softer than metal, so it, it, it cut through it pretty easily. Yeah, if you can, if you have the capability to cut through it with a good burr, you can you can do that. Yeah. But if you sometimes you fill that hole up, and good luck, <laughs> it's it's over. Yeah. Oh yeah. There there was. It, this one, it was just barely, I had some room to wiggle around a burr in there. And it was a brand new burr. That was the key. You can just feed right through it. But you can definitely, um, just showcase it to see how nice that anti-flux works. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so do you brown the, uh, the corners of the tube, kind of you taper them down? Uh, can you repeat that, Ken? Do you uh, taper the round ends of the tube down? Um, not quite understanding what you're, <laughs> what you're asking. It's just because you're breaking up a little bit. Okay, that's all cleared. You saw how that went through? Yeah, real fast. Okay. 10 seconds, or nah, 20 seconds. I'll be right back in a second, okay? okay. Yeah, so uh, when I had to hollow out, I have a, a cutter burr also that <laughs> hollow out that. Uh, sounds like it's bumpy. <laughs> I don't know if you can still hear me or not. I just turned out the sound, so it's not so jarring. But, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, James Murphy, same here. I've had my anti-flux for many years. Great investment. I'm going to get some. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to get some anti-flux now. It, it, uh, it, it definitely is going to be an asset to have. Okay. You with me? There you are. All right, I'm going to turn you back up a little bit. I'm going to put a little polish. And I just ran a little pump polish over there. And I like to finish this part now so I don't have to finish it later because it just becomes less work. You know, when it's everything, well, now the final step is to put together and just do the acrylic work and not have to worry about the polish thing and the pumice thing and get in this, um, the next part. So what, you can see it's ready to go. What do you do when the doctor provides the bands in the model? Does this change your method of finishing? Hey, Kate, I'm losing your volume. Okay. Um, now you're back. For some reason, I completely like could barely hear you. 
Well, I was asking, do you, uh, when the doctor provides bands uh, to mm-hmm. bands in the model, do you, does it change your process of finishing since you can't really take it off, or do you go ahead and take it off? Um, sometimes I'll, yes. And, and most of the time when you heat it up, it'll actually break off anyway. Like you don't want it to come off. Right. Um, it's no big deal because I just glue it back down. I just use that glue. It's cement. It's liquid cement. You put it on, glue it down. You can make a quick adjustment to make sure it's perfectly back in place. And then you're ready to go. So right now I'm going to go to the um, acrylic stage. So I'll, I can demonstrate that, but I got to switch the cameras back. Okay. Okay. And hopefully Bixby doesn't step in. <laughs> Bixby. Yeah, I like uh, Alex uh, Surdu said, I've been watching you and Pete's posts and videos since I started to do ortho a couple years ago. Keep it up. Love the vids. Well, good. I'm glad that, that uh, y'all are enjoying that. Okay, okay, the next step, um, most important. And this is that, I, I heard you say it in the video, you were like, oh, <laughs> you gotta put, at this step, you add your separator. Yeah. See, the, my technique, I have to do it at the very, very beginning, and hopefully I don't forget it. Uh, oh. So it's good the- to, you could do it, you know, in the middle. So now I'm ready to go. So I'll put everything together. And for those who watch my videos, I have to try, you see how dirty my hands get? I can't stand it because it gets underneath my nails. I polish a lot. And to make a long story short, I used to polish with gloves. You know, like I I used gloves. Yes. Your typical blue gloves. Yeah, the natural. And about... 10 years ago, I got my finger wrapped up on the lathe and had both my fingers broken. Oh, geez. So lesson learned. I don't, I don't polish. I like to. So the next step is to just um, wax this stuff down. And I already pre-bent these. They're ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They just drop into place. Yeah, so much easier. So I'm going to wax this down really fast and go from there. And then I'll do the acrylic and we'll be done. I'm not going to finish it because, you know, I have to set up and I, but I will do the wax up real fast okay. and put the springs in and I'll show you what I do when I'm waxing up because you did it a little bit different. Um, I need my spatula and my flame. Yeah, I got a picture of my wax up. What's amazing with the T-Rex, even if you're doing this, like I'm talking this through, so I'm demonstrating, like obviously I could do it in half the time because right. I'm, but still it takes a lot of time to make this little guy. You know, there's a lot of effort into making a T-Rex. Well, it, it looks like you've really streamed it down, and especially with that tack welder. You, you built that part w- without any stress. Where my part, where I was trying to solder it on, had a lot of stress because a lot of things could go wrong at that point okay so i'm gonna wax my wires into place i could i should actually do this with the glue and it actually saved me time believe it or not in fact that's what i'm gonna do it'd be easier instead of going because my wax my wax is in my wrong hand right now like oh to bring that over <laughs> right so i'll just i'm gonna super glue it so for those that don't know, I do have a video on this type of using this type of cement. Uh, mine's Z-Base, but I'm gonna order that other one. I bet you it's cheaper. Um, but we, the lab I came from, we used it on Hollies, on everything, because there was a lot of uh, handling. There were many technicians, and so the wire bender would bend, it get put in a box, tumbled around, uh, and so it would be, uh, it would if it was waxed, it there's a good chance of it getting knocked off. 
if you cement these bars on it, they don't get knocked off as easy uh, unless you try to pick it off. Of course, it loses your finger too. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've gone away, come away a lot of times with glue on my finger. Now, typically, I do this with. Typically, I do this with wax because I can move them around a little bit better. Because once the glue's set, you know it's, you know you it sets. <laughs> yeah. In the wax, you can you know you can make an adjustment really easy. Now here's the thing we were talking about last night is my wires are going forward and like going back and forward. Yes. Hey, my, my vertical is correct, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, it's fixed. You see that? You could actually move Go figure. your your what you're working on about four inches to the right and be more centered. Forward? Four inches to the right. Just move the whole and there we go. Perfect. Now these rests are all gonna get bonded in by the doctor. Oh and here's the now I do have to use my wax, I forgot. The wax and the screw. That was uh, one thing. I it's did. a little thing. Go on, okay. I'm sorry. No, it, I was saying I used to wax in my screw before sprinkling, uh, but I've also seen another technique where you you sprinkle the bottom half and then stick your screw into the wet acrylic and then build the top half. Uh, I so see. Yeah, I, then you can I do that. That last. Well, because from my pictures, you can see that screw. I pretty much had to build the hole underneath almost all the way up to the occlusion and then put my screw in because it was so, the pallet was so deep. Now I added some wax to the, like what you did. So that way you can adjust the screw or you can, I'm not, you can adjust the, adjust the TMA wire. You ever have doctors uh, ask for an adjustment loop on your TMA wire? Yes. Uh, I and like that one. idea because then if it does start um, in, in, in intruding that tooth as it's distalizing in, the, in that arc, they can adjust that uh, adjustment loop and get that thing to, to go more Correct. straight go back. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, I do make those on occasion. It, it doesn't help when the model is very small because you barely have any room to make that adjustment loop. <laughs> yes. But if I have a nice large mouth, I I typically throw that in there. Okay, so the next part I was gonna demonstrate is how I bury these wires, these springs in wax. And you said you didn't do that or did you just not show it? Oh, no, I, I've always always, oh, you bury the, no, I, I, I just uh, clean up the acrylic. Uh, I don't want anything. I don't want any acrylic touching those wires and taking any chances. Yeah, it's because some, you know if your acrylic blows a little bit on it, you got issues. And that TMA wire is really porous in a way. It, it I'm sure it, the acrylic really likes to grab onto those TMA Correct. wires. Right, and it's a little bit harder to clean up at the end. So I'm doing a left-handed job because I'm reaching the wrong way with my wax here. Otherwise, it'd be easy. But that's all right. Isn't that amazing? You can understand the point. How much uh, your setup where you work makes a difference in you know how how things flow and how things uh, get put together so easily. So the next part. What I like doing with this little guy, I know a lot of people, they'll drill a hole out and I'll do all that stuff. I just add this little cement and I'll put a little dab on there. Ah, because it's going to be ground out anyway. Correct. It's all going bye-bye. That cement will be all gone. What, uh, do you ever have to cut the bottom half of that, you know, depending on the, the height of the mouth? Yeah, and I can actually, for instance, I want to, um, 
I might use a smaller screw in this because it's like a small pallet. It's that small pallet thing we we're talking about. Yeah. And that's okay with this type of case. But this is too tall. So I'll just cut a little bit off. You know, just made it a little shorter. So it'll sit down. Mm -hmm. It'll sit down nice and still a little tall. So I can bring it down a little bit because you want it as close as possible. So you were out of frame. You were just taking wire cutters and cutting cutting the end off of that right correct okay. i'm sorry yeah, yeah i just cut it the length off typically it's um here i'll just show you what the car is typically it's like this long and i just cut it can you see that the difference yeah oh yeah big di big difference you can just use a ball burr in the in the for those type what brand uh, so, is that yeah just um the screw? Yeah. It's a Dentorum. Oh, okay. I like their screws. I just never had any failure with them. But the nice part about that glue that I like is I can make, you see how I'm adjusting it? So just the last can, minute. Yep. And then now it's set. And now I'm ready for acrylic. I, I put my separator on. Remember, put the separator on. Yeah. <laughs> and now this is what I would typically do under a fume hood because I don't like smelling this stuff because it gives me headaches. But for the video, I'm just gonna do it right here, okay? And it's salt and pepper technique, you got, I mean. Now, words of the wise, um, like I said, I'm not gonna finish this because this is probably a long video anyway, right? And one of the things that I've always learned about making T-Rexes and um, all pendulum appliances, this part right here, Cade, the back end mm -hmm. is super hard to finish when it's all completed. Oh yeah, that's It's hard to get in there, it's hard to pumice and polish. And one time I had a doctor come up to me and I was asking him if he had any tips about pumicing and polishing that. And he said, here's my tip don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it'll be unfinished. And he's just like, and he described, he goes, you're, if you can take your tongue and put it on the roof of your mouth, it's the back of your tongue. You'll never feel it. It's the, it, this part has to be like, I would say everything from here up has to be nice and flat and shiny uh, because that's what they're feeling with their tongue. Yeah. So why would you bother wasting time and all this energy to get something that's no one's ever going to feel it anyway. It doesn't really matter. The last thing I like to do is I like to add a little clear where the, you know, where the, the arrow is. Mom or dad could see the, the um, the direction. See the arrow. Correct. The direction. The, the one direction. The, the one direction. Yes. How, I shouldn't know that. And then I can cover it with pink. Yeah, my wife was. Uh, it flows because I have my springs buried in wax. So later today, I will post a picture of this on Instagram on my account, and you can take a look at what the final product looks like. And this is going in the pot, and we're, this is done. Awesome. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. finishing it, cutting the screw out, and. Um, setting the springs if your doctor wants you to do that or not. But I'll throw this in the pot and I'll be right back. Just one second. Right. Yeah, so what I'm showing is I turn um, you on. the issue I had with my screw Hello. Are you still with me, Ken? Hey, Cade.
Oh, uh, Jay said that uh, latex gloves are are dangerous. Vinyl gloves don't get caught as easily. Uh, so uh, Jay was talking about you know how you caught your fingers on the latex gloves. <laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> that was a workout. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny doing this stuff live. I, w I wish other people could try it and they could like, wow, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, um, I hope this video helps. Obviously, it's just a different way of doing it. Um, well, let, we got a couple if you minutes. made a lot of them, I highly suggest getting something. Yeah. The talk about the spot welder a little bit. It's from uh, Game Tom, yeah. right? Oh, the spot welder I use is, is called the Assistant 3000. It's from Dentorum. It's, but it's, it's, I, I told you if it, if it broke today, I would have bought one yesterday because that's how much I use it. Um, for instance, I was not to make this video long, but I was going to spot weld all these things, but I think, I think we're getting a little lengthy. I'll yeah. do it for another video. Okay. I'll yeah. demonstrate it, yeah. but I'll show you what I was going to, I was going to spot weld all these, like do it really fast. Can you see? I see your crotch. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to see that oh yeah okay, now, can you see. see yeah like i have a, a herps part and a tpa and a four banded hyrax and it's just um super easy to just grab it spot weld it solder it finish it and you know that the weld's not gonna if anything if the if the weld if the solder joint breaks you still have a really good weld you don't does that make sense yeah so it's it's two and one almost you're, it's it's an insurance policy. It's yeah. the best thing other than laser welding, and um, probably arc welding. Well, and so that's about it. Okay. And to on that note, to promote uh, the uh, conference coming up in April, there's a, a chance we're gonna have the Puck D3 welder there and have demos and people the uh, those that are gonna come. They said to bring actual appliances with you and you get to try your hand at it some trial so i'm looking forward to that to look at getting the laser and i wonder if if a laser will compensate for a spot welder or if you'll always need a spot welder so then you can go in there and laser weld pretty easily yeah i don't know i it's something i'd like to see hands on too as yeah. far as timing wise i know that laser welding takes longer you know how fast soldering is oh yeah once you get th set up you um, just put a thing and i think in that a lot of people just have if your technique isn't very good then you'll have issues with your solder joints if you have really 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 good technique and you can you know do a perfect solder joint you have less problems it's the it's the the catch is you have to be a good solder. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it, and using that technique I used, it really forces you to be a good solderer. <laughs> if oh, that's yeah. the worst. It really Oh, you have to be solder. very good. Yeah, because anything can go wrong. Uh, so with that being said, uh, Steve, tell people where to find you in, in your Instagram account where they could look at these pictures of this T-Rex later you on. Can, yes, I'll post them. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. It's under Zara Dental, S-Z-A-R-A -A, Dental um and follow me on my youtube channel make sure you subscribe make sure you hit a like button to this video if you liked what we're doing oh yeah was oh, that yeah. we can do as technicians to to demonstrate and have people on so the more that we see that you like it and the more you watch the more we're interested in doing it obviously so hit the like button yeah and um share and make sure you subscribe to both Kate's channel and mine, and you can uh, learn more. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and again, other than that, have a great week, and we'll see you again. All right. Thank you. And we'll sign off. And until then, All happy right. bending. All right. Thanks, bye. Bye.